Well, I, yeah. I think today's so, the day where is, we just yeah. become those kind of good friends. Oh my gosh. So oh my god. That <laughs> almost made it a trash can. That? <laughs> that literally almost made it a trash I was not expecting that much uh, <laughs> horsepower here, guys. Wow. How did, Jesus it, Christ. how did it hit the ceiling and almost make it in that blue trash can? Hey, me and my buddy, buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. Hey. They never catching a slack. Hey. Me and my buddy. All right, guys, uh, welcome back to Table One Podcast. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the last compilation uh, last week. I know I certainly did, and it was fucking awesome. Uh, but today, we have a very special guest, Danielle Anderson, D-Moon. I don't Can know. Can you say, are they all special guests, or am I, like, really a special guest? I mean, you're special to me. <laughs> but I do, I, do, I, do, I do think I use the word special probably too much. Okay. Well, I think a couple weeks ago, we had a very special co-host, me. That's right. true. I and uh, just a regular guest, Brent Hanks. So. Well, the only reason I said it that way that week, I remember, is because like I started saying special and I, I remembered I forgot to introduce you. So oh, either way. Just like this week. <laughs> yeah. By the way, guys, also Art's here, whatever. Hello. Just the editor, producer, like, co-host. Hey, you look You're spin out a drink again this week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, to kick things off, right? D Moon is a regular day drinker among us. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you dabble. She Come dabbles. On. She might. She might be teaching a course, actually. <laughs> hey. So we got we got this uh, fancy champagne, which I found d in my uh, dusty part of my pantry, Chandon Brut, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna do some mimosas here on a Saturday morning. I can't wait to watch you open this up. We might have to I can do it. fast mode or whatever. Very Guys, if you're watching on YouTube, you have the full show. If you're on Spotify, it's just going to be a little bit of dead air right now while I, <laughs> while I open it's this. It's going to be great He's when you it off. pop that into one of our I'm heads. sure <laughs> nothing weird will a short happen. episode if I just <laughs> run into the camera. It's all fun games so you take out an eye with the champagne bottle. All right, well, as, as Art's doing that, uh, let's, let's go back to uh, young Danielle. Where, you, when you were little, were you called Danny or Danielle? Like, I'm, I'm, I was Danny yeah, my okay. whole, yeah, whole okay. life until college, and then somehow it morphed into Danielle. Do you prefer Danny from your friends like me? It doesn't really matter, but it is kind of a funny thing because once people get to know me, it's or like if I'm close with them, it's somehow I usually morph into Danny. Okay. Right. Danny. Well, yeah. I, I think today's so, the day where is, we just yeah. become those kind of good friends. Oh my gosh. So oh my god. That <laughs> almost made it a trash can. That? <laughs> that literally almost made it a trash I was not game. expecting that much uh, <laughs> horsepower here, guys. Wow. How did, Jesus it, Christ. how did it hit the ceiling and almost make it in that blue trash can? It's an angled amazing. ceiling here at the Aria. Hot. Here at the Aria. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, and we've got this disgusting orange juice. I mean, regular orange yeah. juice here. Hold here on. Here we go. I'll just drink out of this. <laughs> My size. You guys can have the orange juice out of the champagne. Mmm, yum. Here comes the uh, air. Yeah, here. Just mainly the champagne. How about that? No, hold, we gotta go with champagne, champagne first. Yeah. Champers. Jeez. Chompers. Such Champers. Noob. Oh, this does not smell great. <laughs> I mean, the only orange the, juice is worth a shit. Only the best. Like. It smells like my grandmother's attic. <laughs> you guys lured me here with. Or actually, one of those. You ever have like the emergency? Oh you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's what I'm getting out of here. Just straight oh, up on. orange pellets. Did you oh. did you get me a thing? I got you a thing, buddy. This it's is just over the here. proper ratio okay. for a mimosa. Oh, there you go. For those oh, listening, she's that's so uh, smart. Just for color. One. Just a syringe amount of. Uh, right. There you go. Never mimosa. Mind. All right. Well, we all do it differently. I'll do a syringe amount of vodka. I think. I'll do that too. And to turn it into a man mosa, we have the. I feel like a man stoli. with this fuzzy thing right here. It's like I grew chest hair. <laughs> like, what do we got to do to get microphones that aren't. And we need more uh, sponsors. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> can't just be. Uh... Somebody sponsor these guys. Stoli, are you out there? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we actually reached out to a, a space dust, Elysian. We did. Is a beer, and somehow they didn't respond. I don't, somehow. I don't get it. I'll put the vodka in first for me. You animal. There we wow, go. That was. That's I like aggressive. It. That was aggressive. As, as, I dig it. As I walk in, Art's like, I drank too much yesterday. I shouldn't do that. And then, like, just <laughs> starting again at Hair whatever the time this is. All right, so uh, you were born in Minnesota. This much yes. I know. This, yes, born in Minnesota. 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 Small town Minnesota, Lake Crystal. So you were, were you a good student? I was a lazy student. I coasted. Okay. I, so uh, you could have done better, but like you basically did what yeah, you needed to do. Yeah, I didn't give did. a shit about school. Like I did minimal effort and was like a B student, you know. Okay. Didn't really care, yeah. Were you into sports then? I was very into sports. Uh, we had small school, so I did the only options that I had were softball, basketball, volleyball, cross country. And I did all of them, but volleyball. So. Just, just but that's all, those players. were the only options that you had. What's wrong with volleyball? 
Nothing. It's just it was doing cross country, and I was. Oh, gotcha. I was fast until I got boobs and hips, and then I wasn't fast that fast anymore. Same thing happened to me. <laughs> it's me, actually. Such a little bullshit. <laughs> back, back before I got. Oh, uh, the we're doing yeah, let's do it. Cheers yeah, here. Cheers, cheers, guys. Yeah. Rookies here. I gotta leave the show. Oh my god, we're not even drinking yet. <laughs> All right, anyone out there? I, join us. Yeah. Here's cheers. to you guys. And Daniel. Cheers. Woo. Never had Manmosa before. It's been fun. I didn't know. That's why I learned the term Manmosa. Manmosa. I did not coin it. Sadly, uh, I was on vacation in your kind of home state of North Carolina. I was in Kitty Hawk, and there's this diner there. I don't know what it's called, but it's just like all of them there. They have like little quirky stuff on the menu, and then one of the options on a on a Sunday morning, we got to eat outside on the picnic tables because they're so busy. Manmosa, and it was just. Basically a mimosa with a shot of vodka. So now you guys know out there, you can make your own. Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't failed me yet, except, you know, when it has. <laughs> All right, so when you were in high school, uh, playing sports, being a B student, uh, what was your aspirations? I mean, did you want to go to school? Did you like, oh, I want to be a, I don't know, a, like, a nurse per, The area per se, where I'm from, it feels like nobody ever leaves. So honestly, I never envisioned anything other than just like staying there and popping out babies. I originally was gonna to go to school to be a teacher uh, just because I didn't know what else to do. And that seemed like a reasonable default. Uh, so yeah, no, didn't exactly ever picture my life leading to Las Vegas and poker and the craziness that it's become, but yeah. uh, life is weird. Yeah, yeah, not a, lot of, not a lot of professional poker players probably had that had that earmarked. I mean, my, my I had earmarked doing as little as possible for as much money as possible. So for me, it kind of worked out perfectly when uh, when Moneymaker won that tournament <laughs> back in '04. It, it, it is a kind of a common theme with our guests of like them in high school is just like I just don't want to do anything. Like I, I I know I'm intelligent, but what can I do to wear pajamas every day basically? And it's uh, yeah. I'm not I, saying that's you, but yeah, it, it's like, a lot of lot of poker wasn't players. A lot of guests. Passionate about like any path. So yeah. it was just, it was like, oh, teacher, that's just an easy thing, you know? And I did, I went to school for three years to be a teacher. Where'd you go to school? Uh, well, I started in Wisconsin, uh, Eau Claire, and then I had this cute boyfriend that went to Illinois State University. Ew. And he played football there. <laughs> and uh, I got tired of driving back and forth all the time to go see him, and so then I transferred to Illinois State. What's his name, and will your husband be, be upset? <laughs> Sorry. So uh, his name is Corey. And we will be married 20 years in June. That's awesome. Congrats. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yes. Started Especially dating since you're 32. in high school. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Got, we get married very young in Minnesota. It's a tradition. Um, yeah. So then I went to Illinois State, and that's actually where I learned poker. Uh, it was the year after Moneymaker won, so like peak of the craze. Mm -hmm. And all of Corey's friends were my friends, and they were always playing poker. And you should know, it might come as a surprise, but I am very competitive. And I don't, therefore I don't like the learning process of new things because it pisses me off a lot when I'm not good at it right away. Uh, so I did not participate in this, these stupid poker games for a while, but I thought it was gonna be a fad and they would be done with it, but they just became more and more obsessed. So finally I was like, all right, fuck if I'm gonna ever hang out with these guys. I uh, better learn how to play this game. So I jumped in, started playing. I was terrible at first. Um, it was really frustrating. What were you guys playing for? What was the, the Oh my the gosh, we game? were so broke. Like we would play for like eight hours and you'd win like four dollars. Yeah. Right? And yeah. we were so like our structure, it was like hilarious. We had we didn't even totally understand the rules. So like for <laughs> instance, like we do like these sit and goes, but like if you had somebody covered and put them all in and like or if you had like one chip left, no matter like I don't even know if we had denominations, but if you had one chip left and you were still eligible to win all of the next pot, there was no like, you can only win. <laughs> so, like, oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah like, I like this game. Yes. We should do that too. <laughs> and I, like, Corey kept wanting to like actually do proper structure and we were like, no, 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 that's stupid. Like keep it as it is. All right, real quick. Do you have crypto just sitting in a crypto wallet doing nothing? then you've probably never heard of Gauntlet. Gauntlet.xyz is a billion dollar research company that manages risk for huge internet platforms like Uniswap, Arbitrum, Jupiter, and a ton of other ones. And how can they help you? They actually curate these things called crypto vaults. And what's a crypto vault? Well, you just put your crypto in, you get an interest rate, 
the interest rate depends on the supply and demand of that particular token that you put into there. It's kind of complicated, but their algorithms make it like a thousand poker solvers are working on your side and you get a return on crypto that was just sitting in your wallet anyway. Here, let me show you how it works. I've got 800 USDC here. I'm gonna put it into this USDC vault. Uh, the current interest APY is a little over 9%. So I'm gonna get that for a little bit and I can take it out whenever I want. Now, as you can see, they have a bunch of different vaults, a bunch of different tokens. Do your own research on all of this, which one appeals to you, but definitely don't let your crypto just sit in your wallet doing nothing. It could be here earning for you. So if you've got USDC or USDT, which if you're a poker player, you probably do, uh, you're gonna wanna have it sitting in one of these vaults earning something for you. So head on over to gauntlet.xyz t1 and it'll take you right to the vault page. You'll be able to check out which one looks good to you. All right, back to the show. So um, yeah, it was a, our own version of poker, but that's where I learned. And then pretty soon I just like started winning more often than the others and like, I remember we had a, it was a big, it was a high roller tournament in the dorms. And it, the buy-in was like five to $10. Like it wasn't much, but right. I won and it was like a $60 like first oh, like place. And to me that was like, holy, like let's we're, we're going to Olive Garden, baby. Let's go. <laughs> like, it was so Red exciting. sticks on me, baby. <laughs> it was so exciting, yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, that's where I first learned, but it was actually Corey who was passionate about poker long before I was. And then, um, he had a classmate that was playing online and winning some money. And Corey kept wanting to put money online and was like, you're really good at this. You should put money online. And I'm like, that's the worst idea I've ever heard in my life. Anybody who plays online poker is a total degenerate <laughs> loser. Uh, and he just kept bugging me about it. And finally, I don't know, we got like a Christmas gift or something. It was like a hundred bucks. And I was like, all right, I'll put $50 in. If I lose it, I'm done. Uh, forever and I really truly would have stuck to that like I'm stubborn and I really truly did think that anybody who played online poker was a degenerate gambler <laughs> so uh, I, that's gonna be true <laughs> yeah I put $50 in with zero bankroll management knowledge whatsoever had it down to like $13 I'm sure I had it all at the table at one time um, somehow I down to $13 and somehow never went broke I don't know how Am I allowed to swear? Is this... Oh, fuck yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know how the fuck it happened, actually. It's insane, because I, yeah, uh, Corey understood bankroll management, Corey understood variance, Corey understood, like, we'd, I'd be, be sitting with, like, half of my bankroll, and he's like, you can't do that. And I'm like, no, but there's this really big, like, fish. I gotta, you know, like, uh, and that was pretty much the theme for, like, the first five years of my poker career. So what was your screen name? It was always D Moon Girl, okay. um, and I. It's funny because like when I went to sign up, I put like zero thought into it. I was like, oh, like um, Danielle. My last name at the time was Moon. I'm a girl, so you know, it was like I'm not like there was no real like yeah. Right. It was like okay, sign. And I'm like oh, you know. Um, and so I'm. I guess I'm glad I chose a halfway decent one because. It, yeah, it's stuck. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's stuck, stuck with me, and it works. So. So would would Corey like watch you play? Would he like sweat you like? I mean, did, did he have any action or whatever? Or was it just like, you know, him like uh, kind of like being a cheerleader? Well, in the beginning, he was also trying to like play online poker. And what was his name? I have to know. I Sorry. actually don't know. To be ah, honest. dang. Yeah, it was probably something more clever than Dean Moon Girl, but. Um... Corey Anderson Guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for, K. Anderson. Woo. Yeah, for those who don't know, uh, Corey is a super nice human, uh, very sweet. Also, a, a huge, huge man that oh, uh, was a wrestling fuzzy. champion. Uh, so he is, uh, he's, he's like a big teddy bear, basically, but like yeah. a very intimidating teddy bear. Yeah, and he was playing uh, offensive lineman at the time, so he was like even bigger than he is now. Just, but, but yeah, big teddy, yeah. yeah, big teddy bear. Uh, but no, so he was you ever playing the Incredibles, too. like the. Oh. Mr. Incredible at like the keyboard. I'm just picturing him like playing yeah, online poker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trying to replace him. Mashing his fat fingers on the <laughs> fat beat. <laughs> Danielle, we need another keyboard. <laughs> I've always tried to get him to be the Hulk for Halloween and I don't know, he won't do it for some reason. Oh, but. It's terrible. Maybe Mr. Incredible though. I, I would, I could see I'll it now. Bring, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry, carry on. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, yeah, no, like we both started playing and he was playing at first. And I know like, he had read the poker books and he is a very, by all measurements, Corey should be a better poker player than me. And he should have been from day one. Like if you put it on paper, um, he's very mathematical, analytical, like good at stats, like whatever. Me, like I can 
do math kind of ish, but like it's my least favorite. I have good instincts for it. But if you put me on the spot and asked me to do like a long division problem right now, I'd probably panic. Like, like it's okay. We have a firm yeah. policy on this podcast: no public math. So you're, you're <laughs> yeah, safe. I mean, <laughs> it's only come up a few but times. But he's like glad. crazy good at that yeah. stuff and understanding, you know, um, the things that most poker players have to be good at to be success, successful. And so it was frustrating for him at first because like I was winning and he was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> you know, like, like that. Did you try to teach him? I'm sure he didn't. No, I didn't try. I was just yeah. like, and I was very casual. I was like, oh, gamble, you know? Yeah. And he's like actually trying to like figure this game out. Well, that's out. his problem. And somehow like he keeps losing and I'm like, my ba you know, my account's growing. And um, I don't know at what point he gave it up, but it just became apparent that I was better than him. How, and, uh, how old were you at, at this point? Like when you first like put in money? It was like, you were, like, uh, we were probably like 20. Okay. Yeah, I got married like 21. It was like right before we got married. Uh, and I think the only thing is he's too risk averse. Like yeah. he had all the skills, but like I, if I'm like 51%, if I fuck, fuck, I mean, give me, you know, give me a draw. 49%. And I'm more, ex I'm more excited about having like a big draw than I am like yeah. you know, quads. And Corey was like more, he's a knit, really, honestly. Let's just, well, let's just. That's why he's not a, yeah. not a poker player and you are. Yeah, exactly. But also uh, it was good because without him and his needing, like, being nitty and kind of like, as I, you know, dropped out of school and did it more seriously without Corey, I don't want to say, it's not like he was, he was a little bit of oversight on my um, decisions sometimes, you know, he'd be like, uh, oh, Danielle, do you really think you should sit with a third of your bankroll? <laughs> this is your only job? And I'm like, yeah, I do actually. But uh, so yeah, it was, he kind of helped balance me out a little bit and I don't think that I, He's the only reason I didn't go broke, basically. Well, that's nice. That's, yeah. That's a sweet I mean, it's not say. like he was like, you know, he wasn't rude about it or like whatever, but he was just reminding me of a little bit of responsibility here and there. <laughs> so you put in good. $50 when you're 20 and you drop out of school when you're 21? How, how old are we? So I think I put $50 in when I was, I might have been like 19. But then I, so I was working at a Nike outlet just in college, you know, like nine, ten dollars an hour or whatever. And I was spending half my money on shoes anyways, so it was really not a very <laughs> good Show the audience your shoes today. Yeah. You got the, you got got the cakes the, on now. Yeah, that's Purple right. Ones. Yep. Your shoe closet's I amazing. A, yes, I have a lot. I like shoes. Um, and uh, once I started like enjoying the poker thing, I was like, really, I'm like, hey, I think I can make more money doing this than working at this silly, like, you know, shoe store job. So I quit Nike. Uh, but I was still going to class to be like a teacher. And then I was like, you know what? What was your, sorry, what was your poker bankroll you think at that time when you quit Nike? Like what was that threshold? You're like, I got a thousand bucks in here. I'm it, quitting. It probably, I have $200. It probably was, <laughs> if, if I had to, I would probably say it was like $600. Like it was no. not much. Yeah. Like it was, I mean, you 600 know. was a lot when you're, when you're It might, it might, might have been yeah. less. I don't know. Yeah. Like it was, but um, I remember winning like my first hundred dollar pot. And Corey and I had the same class, but we were coming from like different classes. So I was like, had just won, and I was like walking, and I, he was, I was like shaking with excitement. Like, I can't wait to tell him, like, holy fuck, like, you know, it was like life changing money. So, I don't know, it wasn't much when I quit the Nike job. Uh, and then from there, pretty soon I was like, you know, I don't really feel all that passionate about this teaching thing, and teachers don't make a lot of money. And I, I feel like this poker thing is not that hard. Maybe I can make more money doing poker. So, but it was also intended to be a temporary dropout. So, what's it, what's it, so just like a gap here? You're just taking a little break. Yeah, it was like, uh, I don't really know. After, back after, I mean, I, I've done yeah. three out of the four years to be a teacher and I'm just gonna take a little break because I don't really know what I want to do kind of thing. Uh, That's what most be teachers do. Yeah, yeah, take yeah. a gap year and yes, exactly. play poker. Yeah. And, uh, Usually it's like to start a family or something, you know? And <laughs> <laughs> maybe travel, a little European backpacking vacation. <laughs> We're in front of a monitor here. <laughs> yeah. And so it just never made sense to go back. And I was, that just kind of like rolled from there. But I, I mean, I remember Corey and I having a conversation in the parking lot of Walmart for some reason. Uh, after I had like quit the Nike shoe job, and, like, we were talking about poker and just, we were like, thinking, like, if I could make like an extra hundred dollars a month, like how, like we were just like ecstatic at the idea of that. Like, holy shit, that would cover like our groceries. If I could make a like, hundred dollars, like that was like, 
that was like the pinnacle of what I, that was like my dream, you know, yeah. like a hundred dollars a month, like holy shit, that's like life changing, you know? So no, it was never ever in the plan to, I never my wildest dreams, I think that it would go where it's gone, you know? So what stakes were you playing uh, online? A lot of 25 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent dollars, stuff like that? <laughs> it's all blurry. Like, you know, I, I don't remember like the exact timeline. Um, I know that I was playing higher than I should have been with my bankroll, like at all times, probably pretty much. You gotta move up where they uh, respect your raises. I mean, yeah, yeah. they're supposed to call you at 10 cents. Um, it's hard, it all like blends together. I, I remember playing 2 4 for a long time, and then we were in Minnesota, which we moved back there like 2006, I wanna say? 2000, no, 2005. And um, going from 2-4, no limit to, you know, you could like player search the people, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think I was playing like 1-2, two, 2-4, two, and there was this person that was just like dumping. And I remember like, they left the table and I'm like player search or whatever, and they were at a 5-10 cap. And I had no business being at the 5-10 cap game. So I might have even been playing lower. But of course, naturally. Probably had no business being at the 2-4, and then yeah. you're like, Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Going up to but the I was like, cap. way no business being at like 5-10 If you make a bad cap. decision, might as well keep going. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I followed him there, and I won like seven buy-ins, like 5-10 cap the first time I played it. And so then I kind of got into like the cap games, which um, was kind of like a lot of... Cap, is that 30 blinds or 40 Yeah, it was 30 bigs. Okay. It was 30 bigs. So um, for those who don't know, cap game is you... Yeah play the stakes, if it's 5.10, then $300 is the most you can put into any one pot, and then you run it after that. And that's it. So and so basically, you yeah, you just gotta be just, like you got pocket eights, like let's fucking flip, yeah, like, let's, let's yeah, run it. let's go. And, but there were a lot of people who were professional, like who were like way, way better than me, like skill wise, but like they didn't adjust to cap and they would like do the same thing, follow somebody there. So like, mm -hmm. um, so I got kind of lucky in that respect because I, like made a decent amount of profit off of playing cap games. And then eventually I was playing like 25, 50 cap games, probably when I had a bankroll for like $2, $4, no limit, you know, it's the same <laughs> yeah. thing, like, but. Well, I can um, only lose, uh, whatever, $1,500 yeah. in one hand? Come on, that's nothing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I don't know, it, it all kind of like blurs together, but I know that uh, I was just irresponsible pretty much the whole way. With well, I mean, thing. we're all here for a reason. It's yeah. uh, it's okay. We had we had Scott Seaver on, and he told us a story about going from uh, zero to a million dollars back to sub one thousand dollars three times. So you're not as irresponsible as some oh, people. Oh, I actually, I'm, I'm going to make a, a multi-accounting confession. Kind of, or, uh, yep, no. yep. Right. This um, because, so I'm going to cancel, cancel myself her up. here. Uh, I remember there was, I was again doing something wildly irresponsible, chasing some player to some stakes and. I had like, I don't know, I was playing like two four at the time, I wanna say. And uh, I followed them to like five ten, made a little, followed them to ten twenty, <laughs> and Corey's kind of like peeking over my shoulder, like what the fuck like I literally probably had like half half my bankroll. And I'm playing ten twenty and I never played that high before. And uh, I make the most absurd call for an absurd percentage of my net worth. Um, I'll never forget, it was like pocket twos, like I had, like, beat nothing, but I had like tripled my bankroll in like three hours. And this is like, I'm playing for a living. Corey's in school, like, oh, I am like the income. Like, we, like, it's not like, not like Corey had a stable job, like, you know. And so I like tripled my bankroll like a few hours, and Corey's like, Danielle, get, like, leave, get off the fucking table. And I'm like, I gotta play to my blind, you know? <laughs> and it wasn't even because I was like, I played for it, I'm so nitty, I have to, I was like, you can't just hit and run and leave, like, without, I gotta at least wait till my blind, you know? And he's like, Danielle, get off the fucking table. <laughs> and so I hand him the laptop, here's my multi-accounting uh, confession. I hand him, I play it on the laptop all the time. And I go, here, you can fold everything unless I get aces or kings. <laughs> and then you have to tell me. And I gave him the laptop, and I like walked away. A few seconds later, I hear him, he's like, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> and I run back and I've almost timed out. I have pocket kings. Somebody had already opened and like I didn't want any action. Like I wanted no part of so I made some like you know, I probably like twenty exit or whatever. Yeah. And the person goes all in. I call <laughs> they have ace king. Uh I hold and I've <laughs> it's just 
<laughs> and Corey told me he was like he ta- he was like I almost didn't tell you. I was, was about yeah. to ask. I bet, <laughs> I bet she stared at those canes. Was like, yep. I could just say nothing. She I'm, would never know. <laughs> I'll never forget like the tone of his voice. He was like, Danny. <laughs> And uh, it, it worked out, and I held, and that was probably like the biggest hold in my life. Uh, but it was fun. And then I sat out immediately at that point. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. you know. So much for the hit and run, like, theory. <laughs> yeah. you know, no, after run. that point, oh, I, don't I was hit like run. doing laps. Oh, unless I just do that. I was doing like victory laps around the house. I was like, fuck the hit and run. I don't care anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. What, what site was this on? Uh, I pretty much only played on full tilt. Okay. Yeah. I'm more like OCD about. Uh, like I, I would try poker stars, but like I didn't like the interface, and I like, get used to one place, and it's kind of the same way with live poker. Yeah. I get like my one place, and I usually kind of stay there. So I wish I was that way. I used to be really good on poker stars, and then like I was like finally going into the full tilt waters, and then I just never won a pot on full tilt. I just have like See, that's how I felt on po- poker stars. Yeah, I think they're just so different that it's like yeah. you either like it's like you like Windows or Mac, you know, you just yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, one yeah, or yeah. the other, yeah. and you you can't. I mean, some people obviously it's just a game, and they figure that shit out but for us mere mortals we have our quirks and tendencies and I don't like the way that the avatars looked you know I like the other one and uh yeah, I, anyway that's my excuse for why I never won I'm basically the same <laughs> yeah same for me and publishers so what happened after uh, Corey graduated uh I had a baby pretty much about the same time Easton <laughs> Oh yeah, his yeah. name is Easton. Is he gonna watch this? He's now seventeen. Yeah. I actually don't know. No, probably not. He's yeah. wow. I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't give a shit about you. It's terrible. <laughs> I, he's in that you know like everything mom does is embarrassing stage, which is That's fair f- and reasonable and you know. Just a quick break here, guys. Are you tired of playing with players like this? Not this. No. Like no. this. Or this. <laughs> Or do you want to play with players like this? Oh, wait, you have to oh, <laughs> if you like having fun at the poker table, table one is the game for you. We play high stakes, no limit, 100, 100 blinds. And if you want to get into the game, it's actually super easy. We have a website, table1.vegas. You just go to the website, you click get a seat in the game and fill out the form. It's that easy. It's your name, it's your phone number, it's the date that you're here, and I will personally reach out to you. And it's only 5K minimum buy-in. You know, run it up at 2.5 and join us. Yeah, so Corey graduated, uh, we moved back to Minnesota. Uh, well, because you were in Illinois? or Yeah, we were in Illinois. Back, back to Minnesota. Back to the country. Yeah, we got married when we were 21. Mm-hmm. Uh, I drank, here's a fun little sequence of facts for you guys. I drank for the first time. It's a nice rebranding of story there. <laughs> it's a sequence of facts, guys. <laughs> Pay attention. Not a story. There's going to be a quiz on this. <laughs> I drank for the first time on my 21st birthday. Didn't you, have... you are literally the only person I've ever met or heard of that has ever done that. Really? Well, Corey did the same. Except for he didn't even drink on his 21st birthday. He like waited and just on a random night, what like a few months. This ago. is Minnesota, man. It's basically Canada. No, I... Everyone's very nice and they do follow the law. So, I have, no, what? not necessarily. No, I was like the only one of my friends. It's I was cold out there. Like, yeah, everybody drink drinks. It's, it's the opposite. Cold. Everybody <laughs> drinks. Yeah, he's right. People start drinking when they're like six. Uh, but I was mm-hmm. stubborn. It started because I was stubborn. Like high school sports were very important. I didn't want to get you know. And then I probably would have drank in college, but Corey was already not drinking, and also I just wanted to like prove that I could do it. Uh, Another just, competition. Yeah, yeah, just like a, you know, I don't know, just being a pain in the ass. And so, um, yeah, I didn't drink until I was 20 months. My 21st birthday was the first time that I drank. And my friends were all excited because they've been drinking for so long. And they thought that, like, of course, I have no tolerance. I'm going to get smashed. And um, I have a natural tolerance to alcohol. <laughs> Just built in. <laughs> like, I basically like, outdrank all of them on my 21st birthday. Like, my first time drinking. I was like, what, what's your problem, guys? Like, is the party over? <laughs> like, I'm ripping, like, to t- everything they're throwing at me. And I was like, OK. Jeez. So. Um, yeah, so my tolerance is, I'm kind of a tank, and I know the chat's going to make a lot of comments about you're, the tank. <laughs> I'm, set, I'm setting myself up for that, but... Your, yeah, your no. first drink was tequila shots? Or Not you, my first drink. My first drink was at TJ Friday's, and it was a mudslide. <laughs> All right, I remember all right, that. Okay, that's, yeah. that's but then fun. we went out, and then, you know, it's your 21st people are just buying you shit. And I remember doing, like, a stoplight, which is, like, um, it's, like, tequila. There's, like, three colors. Yeah, yeah I don't even know. Like, uh, the green, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, but it's, I mean, oh, the green is uh, the Kim Kardashian drink or whatever. What's what's the God? It's that's gonna bother me now. Yeah, to go yeah. the, the 
All right. Well, either way, put it, it in the comments. It was, something, you know, it was something green. It was called a stoplight. Yeah. Um, but and at that point, I didn't know the difference between like you know tequila mm. or what. Well, I just was drinking whatever. But they were throwing shit at me, and I was just drinking it. And <laughs> and then they were more drunk than I was, and <laughs> I was like, well, so I'm not a cheap date. <laughs> that's that's the unfortunate part of it. Uh, but yeah, so okay, drank for the first time on my 21st birthday. Uh, the weekend after was my bachelorette party. Okay. And the weekend after that, I got married. All right. Nice well, little. Uh, that's a good yeah. sequence of, so a, of facts, yeah, so as you a, call it. it was, yeah. yeah it, was, it was a solid three weeks. Yeah. Uh, did you guys go? Where'd you go for your honeymoon? Here. I mean, not like you know. Uh, Right here, here, here table but, one. But, uh, wow, Aria, table Aria one. was yeah. around twenty it was, years it was ago. Meant to be, it was meant to be. Uh, no, we came to Vegas. Okay, yeah, we have wow. always loved Vegas. Um, it would be our. It's like whenever we go anywhere, it was mostly Vegas. So yeah, our honeymoon was. I think for our honeymoon, we went like super classy. We stayed at Treasure Island, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other trips. We would always stay at Imperial Palace. Oh, that was the first place um, I stayed too. Oh, I, I, I love Imperial Palace. Right. I was a high roller there. Oh, they're little. That you could bet like ten dollars and they treat you like a king. <laughs> yes, it was great. And like the rooms were like seventeen dollars, yeah. and then they comped you like two dollars an hour for playing poker. And it's like, it was, I mean, we were, we were living the dream. We would um, fly in and like not book a room. You know, the first night we would just like play okay. all night and then wait to check in. Wow. So we'd save money. We were that. That's that good DJing yeah. right there. Yeah. That's and then fantastic. on the tail end as well, we would do the same. We would like check out and just play all day. Yeah, yeah, so we yeah. Well, just save thirty-five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Got them. And then like you know, every once in a while there'd be like the flight where they're looking for volunteers, and we were like seventy-five dollar voucher, and we need to stay tonight. Let's I'll go, go. back. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's good. Yeah, we were like first in line to volunteer all the time. So yeah, that was. This is uh, Vegas. We've always loved it, and Corey, like, he, he still loves poker, and, uh, you know, he can sit and play $1, $2 for... Would you back your husband right now? Fuck, for what? For money. <laughs> no. Well, where? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm just curious. I don't know. Like, no. I mean, you say he's he's reasonable at poker or whatever. No, he's not reasonable at poker. <laughs> she said that. He likes it. It's what she said. Yeah. A just, lot of people like poker. enjoys poker. He should be reasonable like poker. at poker. Like, the last time I think he played poker... Uh, he came over, he was playing like one, two or something, and I was playing higher, and he came over and like proudly told me how he like folded queens pre-flop for like, and I was like, I'm like, get, like, I was like actually angry. I was like, get I don't, away from me. We're, we're, I like, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> like, if we want to remain married, we cannot talk poker. So we don't talk poker strategy like whatsoever anymore. Um, we never really with the exception of the start, we never really did anyways, because we always disagreed, and it was just not going anywhere good. So, uh, but yeah, he hasn't played in a while. He 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 does still love it though. But he'd sit and play one, two, and fold for six fold. hours, you know. <laughs> Knit it up. So, uh, at what point were you considering moving to Vegas, or did, uh, did you go to LA first? I, I honestly I don't remember. So Black your... Friday happened, and uh, at that point I still wasn't never. It was like. Felt, it felt like an impossible thing to leave, like, the area that I'm from. Because, like, nobody, just nobody does that, you know? Yeah. It felt like this mountain that was just, like, insurmountable. Like, you couldn't do it. Um, so even after Black Friday, it wasn't really a, like, true thing that we considered moving. Um, but I would fly to L.A. and play the Commerce, which... Every time I went there, I left a little bit of my soul. Uh, As we all do. It's a terrible, terrible place. But I, I, I know that's the first time we played together. I, I'm oh, sure really? You, I know you don't remember me, but like, oh. just another was white I nice? guy. Yeah, you were super <laughs> I was nice. just kidding. Of yeah. course I was nice. You, just, I'm, I'm you less, three-bedded me so much. Nice <laughs> <laughs> you three-bedded me so much, I was like, come on, stop. And I finally four-bedded you, and I like, threw the bluff in your face. You're like, yeah, well, I'm fine. Like, I was like, come on. That was all your money. Reaction. You were just went <laughs> back. Just nothing. That's funny. Um, yeah, no, so I'd go to Commerce for like seven to ten days, like every month or two, but Easton was two. Um, it was like a really rough age to be away from him for that long, um, on like both of us. 
So then, were it, you doing that before, or you just did it because of Black Friday? I did it because of Black Friday. Yeah, oh, okay. I had like no live experience whatsoever. Yeah, yeah I know what, in like Minnesota, it was they have limit, but like that. The Canterbury is that the. Yeah, and that, then the other, there was, was no like, other casinos yet, right? Like the mm-hmm. like other close, maybe Cincinnati or something like that. Might no, have something. There was like nothing. nothing. Yeah, there was no viable option for me to make money playing uh, live poker. But yeah, so I'd go to the commerce, and that sucked. Um, and, and get cancer from touching the chips. That's right. And they yes. warn you about it at the door when you walk in. And by that point, I had my, uh, that was around when I got my nursing degree. Because um, I did eventually go back to school while I was playing online poker. Yeah, so it was before Black Friday. So I was still playing online poker like full time. It was actually like the, probably the peak of the season. So you did downswing playing. at some point. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, most people who are doing poker and like because they want to like not be in school or not be whatever, don't have a don't have a purpose and whatever. You didn't have a, a direction that you wanted to go, and then oh, was, most people don't go back to school like in an upswing. I was yeah. doing the really weird thing and just being responsible. And Damn. Having, yeah. Minnesota like, values. Was, this is the reason people don't leave that place. I feel like we should end the podcast early. After I know. Time. I'm sorry. That's an embarrassing <laughs> confession. Yeah. Anyway, right. peak let's, money. Let's take a drink. Then. <laughs> hey, poor Becca. <laughs> quick break here have you ever checked out like the listing for Coachella or some other music festival and you look at it and you're like man Kanye I don't know a lot of bands Eminem how do they get all these people on here well Phenom Poker has a list of pros Joe Chong Sergio Ido Justin Young Brian Brass Brass. Chris Hunichin uh, Eric Baldwin it's a who's who it's a who's who of guys who just support this platform and it hasn't even launched yet and Table One is on that list. We support Phenom Poker. We think they're gonna do good things. It's gonna be the online poker site that you can trust. You can deposit with crypto. They're gonna teach you how to do everything. And the best time to sign up is right now before they launch because everybody who signs up to the waiting list is gonna get extra tokens, extra rake back. Uh, it's really gonna be in your best interest to sign up now. So just check in the description below, we're gonna have a link right at the top that says Phenom Poker, sign up through Table One, get on the waiting list and sign up today super simple name email and then you're on with us but no um i i i didn't know shit about like i don't know how long poker would last and or if if it would last and you know um, and once you have a kid i felt like i wanted to a set a good example and b just have a backup plan and so when i had him i like literally when i like gave birth to him the nurse was so great that i was like you know i think i would actually like enjoy this doing this and that kind of like sparked the idea and then um around the same time my mom had gone back to school to get uh for she was an lpn forever and she went and got her rn and she had an online program and i was like well shit i already have like you know I've done three years of school i have most of my basics like it wouldn't be that much so uh yeah so i cool. did nursing school um nursing school is tough not gonna lie that was i actually had to try um, and I was still playing poker at the time, so that was kind as, of a little... As someone that may go to the doctor soon, I'm really happy it's tough to be <laughs> yeah, nervous, by the way. Yeah, I, was, I, I, I would hate to have a bunch of, like, idiots just like... Eh. It, was, it was, yeah, it was... You might have lupus. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe it just felt tough to me because I had to try it for the first time, but I mean, it was, you know... Um, but yeah, no, so I had my nursing degree, and um, I don't even know where I was going this. Did you ever have to actually use it? Did you ever work as a nurse? Um... I never had to use it, but when I was in, when we still lived in Minnesota, um, both my parents and my brother actually, um, they all worked at a state psychiatric facility, which is like near our hometown, it's like 30 minutes away. Um, and there's different like parts, like it's a, it's all, it's, it's like campus, it's like college campus. Um, so like my dad worked with people who, uh, he was a security person. He worked with people who did things that were like so awful they couldn't possibly be seen. So like he worked with like the Hannibal Lecter type scary people. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then my mom worked with people who were more just like in acute mental health crisis. They were cute? Uh, yeah. cu- they were cute. They were, I think we're saying I'm the same sure thing. So, I'm sure some of them were cute, yes. I don't know. I didn't, you know. I didn't, didn't know you ask, had to pick like your patients the if, they were, if they were adorable or not. <laughs> You're in the cute wing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so she was a nurse there, um, and then my brother also works as a security person there. So anyways, um, the only type of nursing I've ever been really been interested in is psychiatric. I find, um, I've always found that fascinating, and then like OB. So when I was in Minnesota, I would work, uh, like, help PRN. It's like as needed. They would, they needed somebody to 
fill a shift, they would call and offer me the shift. And if I wanted it, I could take it, but I had like no obligation whatsoever. Awesome. So I'd probably work like uh, once a week, I'd work a shift at um, a psychiatric facility. And um, I actually loved it, found it very rewarding. Um, but then when I moved here, it was like a whole process to get your license transferred. And I just, you know. No. So the, I haven't the license used it lapsed or No, it... I still keep it like it's it's current, okay. but um, since I haven't worked as long, if I wanted to like work work here, I would have to do like either a refresher course or retake um, the exam. But it, I renew my license. It's still okay. yeah. Where was I going to go next? Well, oh, at some point, at some point in between, obviously moving here and you were doing these commerce trips, there was there was a period of time where like you became kind of internet poker famous. Like uh, you know, was uh, what, was the, what was documentary? Like you're yeah, sponsored yeah. by UB. I mean, like you're, yeah, you're right. I, hey, I wasn't sponsored by UB. Let's not slander. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, Jesus. I was for a second. <laughs> he tried really hard. I tried. He he, he was well. They, almost they, made they, the cut they off. They signed me to a contract like two weeks before Black Friday, and like my <laughs> signing bonus was like five k. And I, like after Black Friday, I was like, all right, uh, like I still get my signing bonus, right? And, you know, and they're like, oh yeah, for sure. It's just on your account. I'm like, <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> Good luck with that. Didn't, didn't get the money. Go get it. Sorry, sorry. Still waiting for them to reopen. Yeah. As soon as they do, though, I'm cashing in. <laughs> um, yeah. So the documentary, that was such a fluke thing. Um, when I was playing like online poker in Minnesota, I truly, I, I was just like a lone wolf. Like I didn't even, like, I had no poker friends. I mean, Corey knew of poker, but like, you know, I didn't know that it was, weird that I were that I was like a female playing 25 50 no limit like I, I truly didn't know um and I would occasionally just like browse the um what was the forum two plus two, two plus, yeah two plus yeah two. that was the popular one um and but I would like just browse never ever posted and one day for some reason and I still don't know why my uh I went to log into my full tilt account and it was just like locked it was like and I thought that I had perhaps been like hacked or you know something, and so I go into uh, two plus two and I go into the high stakes like whatever area and some of the screen names were some that I was like familiar with because I played against, and so I just like made a post like hey my name's Danielle some of you may have played against me I'm Demon Girl on full tilt whatever you know um my this is what's happening like does anybody have any idea like what this could be you know <laughs> I'll never forget like Cole South first of all. We had him on the podcast. Good guy. Yep. Yep. Well, Great guy. Cool. I'll never forget. Like, he responded, and he I think he was like, sponsored by them at the time. And he was like, hey, shoot me like your info or whatever, and um, you know, maybe I can help you. And I responded, and they're like, not to be whatever, but like, I don't know who you are. Like, how do I know that? Like, and then somebody else is like, creeper. somebody else is like, it's cool fucking sell you. <laughs> like, um, but that's how out of the loop I was. Uh, and Coincidentally, that it was the same day that like um, Ryan Furpo, who directed the documentary, and um, Jay Rosencrantz, they had made the announcement that they were doing this documentary. Um, so they were like browsing the same to see the responses to them like announcing this, and that happened to be the day that I made like my post. <laughs> and so then uh, Ryan, the director, slid into my DMs and was like, "Hey, nice. are you really a girl?" And I'm like. Yeah. No. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and he was just like, well, we're in this documentary. Is there any chance you'd be interested? You know, like, whatever. Like, it, my first instinct was like, no. I was like, no. You know? Yeah. Um, I just want my account open again, please. Yeah, exactly. And then it, it, it like, just opened again. Like, 20, like, for, I still don't know why. They were just open. Like, 24 hours. There was, like, temporary. I don't know what they were doing. But, uh, so it just happened to be, like, that day. It was, it was the or series of events. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm glad it happened. But it was just, like, crazy. Just a fluke series of events that led to me being involved in this project. Um, so at first I said no. And then... For those that don't know, what was the name of the oh, documentary? Oh, uh, Bet Raised Fold. Yeah. Bet Raised Fold. If you ever want to see a sad Danielle uh, like 24 hours after Black Friday, <laughs> you can go there. If you if you dislike me and you want to see me um, at like the bottom, go ahead. And Peak tears. <laughs> Enjoy can, Bet Raised Fold. I'm sure you don't know this, but I'm, you can find it like on the interweb right now. Like I mean, is it super easy to find? I'm just I, more curious for like our viewers. So I it's I, on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. I think, All right. I, think yeah, I don't think it was. Was it a behind a paywall or is it just like a free documentary. I can't remember either. I think it's free. I thought it was free. Somebody I watched it not too long ago. I think, for that. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. 
If any of you guys can find it, put it in the comments yeah. for whoever. I gotta reload can't. here. All right, come find out. It. Yep. Reload. Here you go. It's. Wait, are we actually timing out? Or? No, no, no. We, oh, we okay. just keep talking. Everyone's gonna watch you so, pull like, that into time. there. <laughs> so I, I mean, just talking about some. I, uh, as long as it was a good experience, like what, what kind of luck that is. Like I mean, that's uh, that's crazy. Like. If you, your account doesn't get shut down, and yeah, you don't, like, I mean, like don't know who Cole South is. It's such like, a you know, random series of events that led to it. Um, and then, like, Ryan, you know, kind of, that's one thing. Here, we'll finish Take that off. Take the last of it. Go yeah. ahead. Get it in there. <laughs> I got a beer back up. I am who I am. <laughs> um, and then, I don't remember who even the names were, but Ryan started throwing out some names of people who were involved in the project that, like, I actually recognized and that were let like a little bit of credibility and I was like, oh, maybe this is, you know, like the- Not like a lot of Cole South types. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Nobody's. Yeah. I can't even well, remember Well, go, go ahead and name drop. Like, who, who, who? I, I honestly don't remember, oh, okay. but I remember, uh, it was some people who were like backing the project that I was like, oh, I know that person, you like, know, like, whatever. I, I don't remember, but whatever the case, at first I thought it was just like a BS, like whatever. And then when I realized like, okay, it's like a legit thing, uh, you know, put a little more thought into it. Corey and I talked about it a lot. And like the future of poker, like I feel like was um, obviously like very like uncertain at that time because like UIGEA, I think it was close enough. Yeah. yeah, like something had happened, and I know like it was kind of like the law interpretation was up. I knew I knew like that much, and so I was Corey and I talked, and I was like, you know, I never like at that time I didn't want to like I didn't seek fame. It wasn't like I wanted to be like a name, um, but I also realize that there was some value in like maybe poker being represented by like I was just a normal working mom like just you know like taking care of my kid and work poker I wasn't like so I was like you know I like the idea of um being able to like represent that side of poker so that was kind of ultimately what um led us to saying yes now I didn't know obviously uh, when I said yes, it was just, it was originally going to be called Boom, and it was about the poker Boom. Um, and it was just supposed to be about... Bad timing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. And so they had done, I mean, as filmmakers, like, they hit the jackpot. They got so lucky because they already had, like, six months plus of footage of me living my life playing online poker. Like, they would come out... That's how long it took? They would just come out and take a video? They would come and... out for, yeah. like... Was it like once Three a week on day. Sundays or I mean, something? Or? I feel like they had been out probably, I mean, I'm just like throwing in a row. I feel like they had been out like five times maybe and they would stay for three days maybe and just okay. film every, like I mean, our everyday life. So like, that- Like you wake up and they're just like hammering your face? Like <laughs> I mean, like, you know, not, maybe not that extensive, but they basically, they wanted to be there enough that it wasn't weird and they would just capture like just our normal activities, you know? Um, so they had all that footage of, of me just living my life, minding my own business, just clicking buttons and playing online poker and being a mom and life is good. They show, did they show you tilting at all on the, on the computer? Uh, not on the computer, but they show me tilting playing my first ever 10K buy in at W. Uh, the block at, at, No, at um, Commerce. Okay. Yeah, that oh. was super fun. Fuck my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I knew it was fucking about my life. If I can my, find that my, part, I'll put it in it's, somewhere here. It's, yeah, it's actually pretty funny. Um, oh. Oh. Fuck my life. Yeah, it was really silly. That's going to be tough to play your first like big buy-in and just have a camera in your face like as soon as you bust. Yeah, everyone at your table is like, what's going on? Why and do you also, hire these people? It was yeah. like, and also at that time, like I had realized... I'd become in the know enough that I was like kind of realizing like, oh shit, like sponsorships are a thing. And so I was like kind of trying to start like seeking a sponsorship. Yeah. Oh, hey. It was free money back then, guys. It was uh, well, crazy. I didn't if only know. you had heard of two plus two in like 2007 or 2008, man. Like, I, I just like didn't, I didn't real, like I said, I just didn't realize that it yeah. was like that much of an anomaly to be a female playing, you know? And so on top of that, it was like my first like, Full Tilt gave me, uh, I don't know, like a small amount of money to wear like a patch during the tournament or something. I was like so excited. I was like, but I felt like that was the first, I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to get sponsored. Yeah. You know, like, let's go. <laughs> so yeah, it was a little tilting to have the camera in my face and a bust and whatever. But um, 
So anyways, they had all this footage of us just minding our business, living our life I'm in a small town, Minnesota. And then one day I wake up and go to log in and, you know. We've all seen it. The it. DOJ screen, the yes, FBI yes. has seized this domain. Or Yes, we're all familiar. How, how many times did you try, try to like refresh the screen? I know my, my account was probably in the 20s. Like I was, uh, just like, I was yeah. like, this this can't be real. Come on. I tried it from yes. another computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another computer, yes. like, poker not, stars, full tilt, ultimate bet. Just like paradise. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, no, come and on. And then like, I went to uh, like... After refreshing 30 times, of mm. course, I went to 2 plus 2 and saw, you know, all the threads and it was just like, well, good game, we're all yeah. fucked, you know? <laughs> and I had an irresponsible amount of money on my account and, you know, it was, um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like so stupid, obviously so stupid in, hi in hindsight, I mean, but I had a significant amount of my net worth on there. I don't know what percentage, but it was like, I would just take out money when I needed it to like, pay bills. Yeah, like, that I was basically your bank. use it as like, yeah, like, and, the, yeah. I think that's how a lot of us did it back yeah, then. Okay, that was well, my bank account I too. At least I wasn't the only <laughs> no, fucking you were idiot. <laughs> I was just lucky that I only won on Poker Stars because my full tilt balance was not much to speak of. <laughs> but even like Poker Stars, there was a while where it was like, uh, nobody knew what was going on. Sure, know? sure. So, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. No, that, there was. getting it right away, I feel like. But, but Corey was like a student teacher at the time. So he's still, we still end up a paycheck from you know and um i'm re refreshing and then look at two plus two and i called Corey, knowing he was like soon teaching and told the I'm like you know please tell it's Corey it's not a, a life-threatening emergency but i need to call like you know he <laughs> calls and i'm like, ah! and I'm just, I'm like actually ah! we are dying <laughs> you know? and like i don't know like what he's gonna do you know um but the uh, documentary makers, they were, they recognized an opportunity and they were like, hey, we're on a flight and we'll be there. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> so, hey, how do you feel right now? Okay, we'll be right there. Hold yeah, on. Hold I don't even think, think they like asked me. Like, I, it was just like, hey, we'll be there in like you know, 16 hours or something. Was, and so, um, yeah, that was true raw emotion. They got there basically as quick as they possibly could. Um, I mean, props to them as filmmakers. They recognized, you know, they, they recognized immediately that the whole project was shifting. Like this was no longer about the poker boom. This yeah. was going to be about We're know, the whatever was here. happening right here. Yeah. <laughs> it was about the fold part of Bet Ray's fold. It was just like, yeah, oh, yeah, it was, yeah. Fuck. yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah. they were there while the emotions were still very, very, very raw and authentic. And um, so yeah, sad Danielle on uh, Bet Ray's fold. It was like, but yes, it was very difficult to have a camera in my face like 16 hours I, for the worst. I like, could imagine at that time, like the worst. I, you know. And the answer, like, I, I didn't have, my money was locked up, but I f still at that point felt like it never occurred to me I could leave Minnesota, like, whoa, you know, <laughs> that's a thing, what? <laughs> so, yeah, they were there with cameras in my face and asking all the questions that I didn't want to talk about and didn't want to answer. And Like, I signed up uh, for this. <laughs> Why did I sign up for this? Yeah, kind of, it was like that. But also, I... I mean, I wouldn't have been able to hide my emotions even if I wanted to, because they were just, like, so raw and whatever but so yeah i don't know that was yeah, that was back far yeah. <laughs> yeah we all so anyways uh from there i was really sad and then how i eventually ended up in vegas is you know the documentary eventually premiered it uh got i think fairly good reviews from the poker community it did well yeah it did well um what'd you get out of that did they pay you anything no 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 no, no, no. no like... it was never a paid thing but um you know i was like hoping to get yeah, get your brand up I mean, a little bit. I got like uh, they, well not they. When Full Tilt and Stars like they merged, whatever like, um, that's kind of a roundabout. They sent me to like Ireland. Like it was like a mini sponsorship kind of thing. And then uh, I got a, they put me in the main event one year. Okay. Uh, when yeah, it was like a feel good like because you know it was like oh devastated Danielle and then when Stars. The people who made the documentary? No, 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 stars. Show? Yeah, the public oh, stars. Okay. Yeah, when they took over full tilt, it was like, a, oh, like, let's make Danielle not sad and we'll put a happy ending on them. You know? $10,000 um, ought to cover it. <laughs> yeah, I busted on day one, so that was cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it wasn't a paid thing. Um, it did obviously lead to some name recognition and sure. stuff I, like that. And then what ultimately led to us moving out here was Ultimate Poker. Uh, oh, I remember you Ultimate that? Poker. No. No, okay. No. Um, yeah, I remember Ultimate Poker too. What, what year was that? 
that must have been. Gosh. Uh, uh, 15, let's 16? see. When, when was, did. Uh, I feel well, like it was Easton, Okay, so yeah. Easton started first grade here and he's a junior. So, yeah, it was like 11 years ago ish. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 13. Yeah, so. I mean, they might have started before, but that's when we moved on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'd... Um, for those that don't know, Ultimate Poker was the Nevada specific, yeah, like run, funny, run by. Was, big into it, right? was it run by like Stations Casino? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stations Casino's version of uh, mm -hmm. online poker. It, but it was only inside. You had to be in, in Nevada to play, and it was like not the best graphic. I mean, whatever. Well, it, it, the, was false, the it was, it was, was horrible. It was, it <laughs> it was, was horrible. But, right, but it's the first one of its kind. And they they started, you know, thinking that other states were going to like soon follow and right. that there was going to be like a collaboration, like California was going to join mean, and there's going to be a big player pool and you know, whatever. And like that shit just never happened. So, I mean, they really dropped the ball. They had like an awesome monopoly spot and they yeah, just like... Yeah, but there just like wasn't enough players when you can only play like Nevada. My hair's driving me nuts with this little fucking hairball here so i'm gonna eliminate <laughs> shave your chest i'm gonna eliminate all <laughs> tie your hair in a knot uh, jesus christ there you go um I mean, it was bad timing, but like they still had Somebody monopoly, and they could have done a lot like better. I, I'll just I'll, I, yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna get into the business. I don't know shit. But whatever the case, they uh, reached out and offered me a sponsorship uh, when I was in Minnesota, and it was not like a ton of money, but it was enough that Corey and I we were had started to kind of be like over Minnesota, and we we're like, eh, you know, it was like it was a like guaranteed money, and also we were like, let's. Take a chance. So Corey was just snap yes. Was, I mean, like. No, it wasn't an easy decision, especially because okay. like Easton was the only grandchild on wow. all sides. He was like Corey's away from family the, the and my family yeah. lived. Yeah. Um, so that was tough because that didn't go over so hot um, at first. I can guess. Yeah. Well how, well, how much money did they offer? We gotta know. The people have to know. I, I am actually not positive. It was somewhere between like three. <laughs> Oh. Three to five thousand. Okay, there yeah, you go. It was it was so like, much smaller than I thought. It was. It was not. <laughs> it was like. There you go, Minnesota Anderson Moons. Oh, that's yeah. what it. That's what it's worth to lose your only grandchild to Las Vegas. <laughs> Three to five k. Move to a desert where I know nobody or all my friends and family. But I get three thousand. Oh yeah, no. Let's, it, let's go to Vegas. It, it, it's guaranteed money. It was close friends. Yeah, that's good. Um, and also Corey, like, it was kind of things happened at, like the right time. He had. Like applied for he has he was born to be a coach and he had applied and been rejected for like I mean in small town Minnesota like it, for like five jobs that like he was like way overqualified and so but it's all about like who you know like Corey I, he was like too advanced for them like seriously he was like I can so see they were, it like, being very and so entrenched just, like, in like well my cousin's brother is obviously going to take my spot when i leave yes it's very much like that and there's like not that many opportunities it's a small community so he was frustrated with that because he you know didn't he was tired of being the assistant coach who was like way smarter than the head coach and like and just being frustrated by shit like that so that combined with the massive paycheck of three to five k you know um, it was a no-brainer to just snap our child away from, you know, all of the family that loved him dearly. That'll cover the first move, and last months of rent. And move to Las Vegas <laughs> to be a professional, you know, poker player. At least you had been here before. I moved here sight unseen, signed a lease, and just... I signed a lease sight unseen. We had been here, but hadn't done... Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you guys didn't live in Imperial Palace with Easton? <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't considered that option. It probably would have been a bad it's idea. $17 a day. I mean, no, I think by that time it was, uh, it was imploded, but like a... Yeah. Yeah, that was a sad day. I never went there, but like you would see the little tiny cutout of like where you could go into there. Where was it next to? It was uh, it was like the... on the corner, like near Harris. Like uh, if you go that way, near it's Harris. where like the link is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a great place. Like yeah, the, the the gray one dollar chips, like the the dark gray. Oh, well, <laughs> they're white, but now they're gray. <laughs> On our honeymoon, all Corey and I had ever heard about was how great the buffets were in Vegas. And like, fucking idiots. We don't know we, went to Imperial Palace. we literally went to the Imperial Palace buffet and we're like, well, this isn't so great. Like, What's I heard about all these like, great buffets. Like, this like, sucks. The, the, the first time I went there, and like, I didn't have any ideas of what like it was. Or like, oh, when they send you the elevators, you went down like two stairs and up like four stairs and like down two stairs. It was the weirdest like track. Like it was it was all a straight shot. It was one hallway, but like like there was some kind of construction like 
all the way between here and there. So it was just like, oh, I'm going up. I was like, oh, well, I'm going back down. I'm like, oh, back up again. And it was like, where does the elevators come in? Like, I feel like I'm doing all the work. <laughs> that is hilarious. Such a great place. Oh, and the ceilings were like almost scraping oh, they were, their head. Yeah, they like, were so low. <laughs> And you walked, when you walked in, the poker room was right there with, to yeah, the right. Right, right to the right, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And our honeymoon, Corey and I, the first time we walked into Imperial Palace, which we weren't staying there in our honeymoon because that was, we went all out, you <laughs> uh, know, yeah. Treasure oh, Island, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we did go into Imperial Palace and it was like the first two hours of like us being there. And we walk into Imperial Palace and the first thing I see is Scotty Wynn. And I'm like, oh, this is holy <laughs> shit. Thank you so hey, much. baby. <laughs> We were just like so excited about that. So, uh, anyways, I don't know what topic we're on, but Scotty Win. We were moving here. We were ultimate pokering. It. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You came so, here. You got three thousand oh, yeah. dollars in your yeah. pocket. Got three thousand in the pocket, to... and we're in Vegas. And we signed a lease. Came out here. Uh, we knew pretty much immediately that we were not going back to Minnesota. It was, wow. Yeah. Oh, it what was, was the just? Um, it just. First of all, I don't think either of us realized how much the weather like took a toll. On us. Um, so, like the first winter, like we moved here for the school year. So, like Easton was here by August, September. Um, and like that first winter storm that like hit in Minnesota and we weren't oh. there, we were like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm outside of my shorts. You're in yep. your bathing suit yep. off the back. Like, I, I, like, never I mean, like, you should go good. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, no, we're not going back. Um, right. And also, just that was our first experience, like, Corey's from a town of like 200 people. I'm from a town of, you know, like 1,200. So we were like, whoa, you can like, there's, Stuff you can do. like eat somewhere that's not More like than Applebee's. one McDonald's? Get the fuck yeah. out of here. Like there's restaurants here. that are better than Olive Garden. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> Our, I had slightly more people in my town, but Applebee's was my wife and I's very favorite restaurant. It was like the best. Like fucking Apple. We actually even won an, a raffle one time where we got one free meal a month at Applebee's. Ooh. And it was like, wow, we're going all out. We're getting the bourbon street steak tonight, you know? And uh, we came here. First, like, nice dinner we went to. We went to Applebee's. And it was, it was, uh, it was, it was good. But, like, then we revisited it, like, whatever, a year and a half later after we had been to, like, Fix, which RIP Fix at Bellagio. Oh, yeah. well, mm. Uh and you know, got a steak, and it was like rubber compared to like anything decent. You know, and we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah sometimes I wish I food. could not be. I wish I could go back and like not be a food snob. Yeah, it's like that guy from the Matrix that like gets plugged back in. You know, yeah. it's like small town. Put it back in me. <laughs> no, I mean, like literally, if like a special occasion celebration, like the best, the best was like Olive Garden. It was like a thirty-minute drive. And it'd be like a three-hour wait. Like they didn't take reservations, you know, like on a Friday night. Like that was like. It's gonna be worth it, guys. Yeah, that was Feel like the, the shit, you know. Um, so it was pretty quickly after we moved here that we were like, yeah, we're not going back. We do that immediately. And also, like Easton, um, like he's, I, like had the realization kind of that like when you're in a small town, you only have so many options for like things you can do and friends that you can have. Like you know, I graduated with. Uh, 67 mm -hmm. people in my class. So you have friends, but a lot of them are friends just because you don't have any better options. And you don't have like, there's no like place kind of, like, you know For what I mean? For those watching, like, yeah. You I, guys I, agree. Yeah, I mean, Sorry, you know, they don't have internet there. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I still have some friends that I, you know, am close with from there. But also I like, I just, I knew that like, I never really fit in there. I never really like, found my place. Mm. And I was like, you know, there's, good things and bad things about a, a small town living or whatever, but I felt like I didn't want Easton to feel that way. I wanted him to be able to like have more options to like find his people instead of just like, oh, well, you'll, you'll, there's only like 12 kids that are even, you know, eligible to be friends with. And so you're just kind of stuck with, and that's kind of who, you know. Be friends with these guys or huff and paint. Like, yeah. And also like, <laughs> and also like activity wise, like, okay, you have, you know, you can do these three sports or you can do like one, you know, whatever. Right, like, there's yeah. just not... And um, so I liked the idea of him going to a bigger school with like, you know, uh, more kids, more activities, more options, being exposed to different types of people, that, that type of thing. All right, so <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drag us back just a little bit. Okay. Like the, honestly, the, the point where I felt like, I wouldn't say I got to know you, because like we didn't really meet each other until later on, but like where you became more in the public eye, at least for me, was when you did uh, 
I wouldn't call it a bit, but like you did like a competition against Dan O'Brien. God, um, yeah. And like I, I, I loved watching those. I watched every single. I didn't one get of paid enough to do that shit. Holy fuck! I, it looked looked very it? entertaining and hard and whatnot. But like you both are very competitive, and it was a. Uh, oh, yeah. I haven't heard of this, by the way. So oh if you want to lay the entire yeah. thing out there for me and the viewers, like was it was it me versus me versus you, you or yeah. was it you versus me? Oh, me sorry, versus I'm not sure you? I don't. I don't know. I it was either me, me versus you. Me versus you sounds better, just you, from a pure copyright perspective. And then it was like ultimate poker. Um, but yeah, it was like Dan O'Brien and I would face off in these challenges. How, how did it come about? Like, was it part of like ultimate poker? Or it like, was part of that 3K okay. to 5K paycheck that I was just raking in. That was the 2 5K? <laughs> wait, wait, that was part of your job stipulation? I mean, it wasn't, move, at, it wasn't at first, but like also you kind of just did what they asked yeah. you to do. And, and it was fun in fairness. Like, it looking back, I'm like, oh, we should have had some serious insurance coverage or something. <laughs> I mean, some of the stuff that we did was like, I look back and I'm like, that was sketch. Um, All right, so but we'll it was fun. It was like a well-edited YouTube series they put out. We Dan and I would do like a different competition. Give um, an example. Come on. An example, like okay, I think the most like sketch one is um, uh, like the police dogs, you know, that like chase you down. So they put us in the suits, and like we had to like, <laughs> it's like, it's like race. Um, with and then they would give you so long, and they would let the dog go, and the dog would chase you down. But like. We're doing this in like a gravel lot with no, nothing covering like my face. I'm just in like a suit and nothing covering my hands. And it fucking hurt. Like the dog, like, so that's for instance, one of the things that they like made us do. I actually used to do that. Just like my dad would just make me do it for fun. Like uh, he, he, he was a dog trainer. Dog trainer. Yeah, sorry. And uh, he would like... Some context. There. He he would teach. Uh, it's called Schutzen, where where a dog has to do that, bite someone or whatever. And he would like, he, we didn't we didn't have the whole body suit. Oh my god! <laughs> so I just had the arm, you know, the sleeve they call it, and it's got the little handle on the inside, and it's just fabric and like some padding on the outside. And you know, he would. That's one of the things he liked to teach the dogs to do. You know, because I, I don't know, he wanted but to kill his son. But you were at least like standing, right? Like, I mean, uh, yeah, I was ready for it. I wasn't yeah, just like, like, I wasn't we just were, running we were, and like, getting running, taken down. Like, and please grab my arm, please they, grab my they arm. They were like, okay, go, and you're like, I'm like running, <laughs> and then there, and then there's a dog chasing me from behind. I can't see. It. I don't know exactly when it's going to get me. And it like leaps at me and just fucking. <laughs> Yeah, no, I can actually perfectly visualize exactly what's... Plus, you can't run very fast in those suits, so no, you're yeah, exactly. like, like one waddling, mile an hour. Like, like, eh, it's the like, episode oh. of Fear Factor, except yeah. you only got three yeah. to five and K. And they, let, <laughs> they let my dog go, like, way sooner than Dan's dog. It was, it was bullshit. It was rigged. But, like, shit like that. And then there'd be, like, a punishment. Like, that one was... That wasn't the punishment? <laughs> No, well, that was a, no, that was exactly, a competition. Exactly. I was Lucha, not, like, like I said, I was not paid enough for this. So I was curious, who got to pick the punishment? Did the producers already have like a punishment in place or you guys kind of like talk about it? Amongst uh, it was like a, a collective brainstorm. Usually, mostly the producer people, but like there was a couple times where we would be like, absolutely what, not. What, what was like, your worst or best punishment? Or whatever, like, what was the, the funny thing is like the, the worst parts of it weren't even the punishments. It was some of the competitions like we did Thank one you. thing called um uh putrid pong and it was like beer pong uh -huh. but Ooh, I, I like this already oh god what's um, in the it was, cups so yeah it was like beer pong but like we drafted there was like terrible things in the cups and we oh i like, remember this one, one. By, oh, god. oh my god i do remember this one we went like so it was one by one uh like different things in the cups and was one of them this Orange juice. <laughs> God, it was so it was so bad. It was like would not drink. There was a live goldfish, which like we had agreed oh. like off camera that like we weren't gonna actually drink live goldfish because that was like bad. But then Dan had the live goldfish and he just like actually drank it. I can see that. Oh, Protein my, is good for you. I might want to edit this. We'll have pita after us. Um, but <laughs> but it was like 110 degrees, and then the, it was it was like mayo. It was like fish oil, it was um, like uh, oh. uh, buttermilk, um, Tabasco oh. sauce. Uh, I think fish oil was the worst one for me. Oh, um, there's some disgusting fish that I, I still see in the grocery store sometimes. It's like, <laughs> it gives it's you like, little flashbacks? <laughs> um, some nasty, oh God, I can't even think about it without gagging. Ugh. Is it like not sardine, something like actually? No, it's like in a can you can see it. It's like gray and it's it's so gross. I, it's I'm, like a little I'm, tin in each. 
No, it's well, that's sardines. So yeah, was, it, it, it's in a. You can see it. Like in, it's in a jar. A glass um, jar. You can see the yes, pickled. Yes, it's that that pickled gib, fish gib, feet. Gib, 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 I thought it was. Oh, gefilte fish. I think it is. Yeah. 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 All right. That was one of them. I don't know what that is, but I've um, never had it. <laughs> like a raw egg, which is like that one. That's that, fine. That's yeah, fine. but the problem. I mean, there's a lot of problems with this. <laughs> but the thing, it was like 110 degrees, and like they're filming, so like oh, you know, it like takes a while, and so like. Is it not bad enough drinking buttermilk? Like it's like fucking warm buttermilk. This curls. This raw egg is now hard boiled. And like we have we have like buckets in case we need to throw up. And like I'm like gagging, like watching Dan. Like gagging, just thinking about it. It was it was so bad. Three to five thousand dollars. I know. I know. (laughs) Jesus. I know. I wasn't a good negotiator. I don't know what to tell you. I thought you got paid so much more money. Oh my god! I should have gotten paid so much more money. I should have gotten paid so much more money. Um. Yeah, so there's, I think all the episodes are still uh, somewhere on the YouTube. All right. so Guys, if you want to see me <laughs> yeah. get to work. Being attacked by a dog and gagging. Um, well, gagging. <laughs> Jeez. Not in the same that, time. Yeah, I um, <laughs> left myself open for a joke yeah. on that one. <laughs> we'll edit it together where it's not going to sound nearly. No, no, I mean, leave it out there. That's fine. That's funny. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> you just do it. But yeah, uh, so that was three to five years. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we were here for all of like four months or something, and the company folded, and I found out on social media. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> you're like mid raw like, egg, and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> we're going down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that was Ultimate Poker. Rest uh, in peace. Rest in peace, fuckers. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it got us here. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, it got us here, and I, I'm. It kind of gave us like an excuse, got us over that like hump of like, can we do it? Can we not? And then it was like, oh well, obviously it's a no-brainer, three to five k, gotta go. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we were staying here no matter what. So. I feel like poker should be tied back into this at some point or whatever. But yeah. 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 We got a long way to go to 2024. Yeah, no, that is true. <laughs> this is a while uh, ago. Yeah. <laughs> the, and the current poker so happenings anyways, are pretty boring. One, two, skip a few. Yeah. <laughs> Ninety-nine. That's the show. All right, that is it for part one with Danielle Moon Anderson. Her story is crazy. She has a lot in there to unpack. We had over two hours of footage to work with, and I couldn't really justify putting a feature-length film up on YouTube. So you're just going to have to wait another week for for part two. Um, So turn on the notifications, subscribe to the channel. She's got private games we talk about. We talk about Table 1 a little bit. We talk about her WSOP main event run. And, of course, the $50,000 long drive golf bet that she had uh, with a man who owns some, let's just say, less than gray establishments. Yeah. Uh, So stay tuned for that next week uh, with D-Moon Girl. That's pop. Me and my buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. They never catching a slack. Me and my buddy, we working hard for this money. You know I've been in my bag, buddy, I got it like that.